Hi, I want to show you how to make a llama tonight. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lump of clay and I don't know why it has to be that size, but just because this is the one I've made, I'm going to make one sort of like it. And I'm just taking a lump of clay and I'm starting to kind of work out and soften some of these bumpy edges just by patting it in your palm. You can work out some of those bumpy, uneven edges, just patting it purposely, leaving this appendage up here because this is going to eventually become the head and the neck. And I use the side of my finger to smooth out any unappealing creases that didn't come out when I was patting it to begin with. Okay, so now you can see it's already starting to take on that image, that likeness. I'm going to bring forward the snout of the llama, have it kind of stubby. And again, using the side of my finger, I can easily smooth out any harsh cracks and crevices, kind of like an eraser. Some people tend to dip their hands in water and get water all over their clay. I really recommend keeping your fingers dry because if you're not adding water to the surface, there's less likelihood of there being cracks forming from underneath the surface uh, and showing up the next day. So this works really good for me. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take from underneath and I'm going to carve out some of that with my needle tool. So with a clean needle tool, I'm going to carve out from in between the legs so easily and carve out from be in between the hind legs, carve out from in between the front legs, Slicing over. Okay, so that leaves me with a mess, but again, with dry, dusty fingers, I can easily form that, smooth that, and define those little nubs, those little squared pegs, into llama legs. All right. Erasing any weird crevices that I don't like. And it's just a simple sculpture. It's certainly not anatomically correct. I'm not looking for fine detail and muscle structure. This is just fun on a rainy afternoon or a snowy afternoon, or just an afternoon where you're looking to create and not be somewhere else, okay? So then I'm going to take, it's a little wire brush. It's a feather texturing tool. This is the tool I use for attaching pieces of clay together, but it's also great for brushing and adding the look of long hair. So I'm texturing it up. There we go. Giving that look of the long hair that they tend to have along their neck and on the front of their torso. Maybe down a little bit on the forehead, too. Furry under the chin. There we go. Okay, so now... Oh, it's the little sister. Okay, anyway, here we go. I'm going to use some of that clay that I carved out from between the legs to make these fun, exaggerated ears. I keep cutting them and one gets shorter than the other. So I'm going to cut this one and let's say that's even. So I'm going to texture it with the end of a cooking skewer. There. Just imprinting inside there. Cool. Now I'm going to score and slip those on. I use my wire brush to scratch it and I've been dipping in this water here to wet it and press that on. Nice. Straighten those ears up. And then with a pencil tip, 
I like to make little eye sockets and put little eyeballs, super, super tiny eyeballs. Typically they're so tiny that I usually drop them and lose a few of them before I actually get them in the eye sockets. So, and it's so tiny also that I can't use the wire brush to score and slip. So I use the needle tool, poke that into the water and then poke that into the eye socket and then gently drop that in. Drop the eyeball right into the eye socket. Okay, and then with some flared nostrils. There we go. I think I'm gonna fur up the ears too. Okay, and then I like to make a little blanket, just a super simple oval. I'll flatten that out with the rolling pin. Texture that ever so easily with whatever I have on hand here. So I can use little circles. And a couple of lines. Just to give it some sort of a light pattern. Nice and easy. Straighten up that neck. Bring the head down. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm going to scratch them with that on though. Because of course you want to score and slip everything you're attaching. Otherwise it's falling apart before it gets to the kiln. Add a little nub of a tail, a little bead back and forth, fur it up, and fur it up all the way around because then that's acting as if you're scoring and slipping, and stick that on. Yeah, they look like a fun pair. Thanks for watching.